Good morning, Year 10. I'm sorry this is a little bit later than it probably should be. Uh, I had a bit of a technical issue with the video that I've done previously. Uh, it just had no sound when I went to upload it, which is a bit of a shame. So I'm redoing it this morning. Um, however, um, what we're going to focus on again is orthographic projection. Uh, the main reason I'm going to be doing that is because last time we got some quite good drawings, as you can see here, on the Google Documents, but there were a few people that didn't get the views quite right, didn't quite get the dimensions quite right, or dimensioning the title block, um, and also some other little bits and pieces such as the projection lines. Now, what I've done for every single person, I've recorded a mark for those people who have done it, and I have given you all feedback on my feedback site. So, my teacher's feedback, you need to go to login, um, just delete that one because you're not going to need all my details. Um, you will remember that it is your first name, your surname. It's E L A as the code, and it's just here it should be password one. If you're having problems logging in, then obviously email me. I can sort it out, reset the password, whatever needed. But I'd like you first of all, in the first instance, to listen to that feedback because that gives you really clear indication of exactly what grade you've got and the reasoning I've given it to you. Now the unit one, which is what I am marking it to, is what you are going to need these drawings most for. Um, you will need them possibly for unit two, but unit one you've got to do some drawings and one of the eight key marks in order to get a distinction, you have to do certain things, which is what I'm aiming towards. Now, what I've created and added to is a little bit of a PowerPoint, which I will attach as a PDF as well. It goes on about orthographic projection in general. This is a really nice example of a very simple one that shows you everything that you need in order to get a distinction level pass. You can see that we've got, we don't necessarily actually need the isometric view just there, but if you can add it in, all better. But you've got the front view just here, plan view just here at the top, and then the side view. So you've got this L shape that goes round. What you're seeing here as well is that it has got all the dimensions on it. It is also showing hidden detail and also center line. So this dotted line that comes through is a center line and you can see a center line just there and there's a center line just there for any circles. It's also showing an R for a radius and this symbol for a diameter. So you've got all the key things that you need in order to make sure that you get a high distinction mark. Now none of these should be a surprise to you. Mr. Newbold should have gone through them all um, and how to do them. But you can see hidden detail. It's just done with a dotted line as indeed is any center points. A radius, obviously you will understand how to measure a radius. But notice how you've got this arrow coming down, not quite touching it with a thin head on it. And the R35 means a radius. And the same type of thing if you want to do a diameter, but it has this special symbol just here, and obviously having it with that cross going through it as well. Now, I've put down here the different things in your exam and also for unit one, you will need to be able to draw in both orthographic and isometric projection. And this is what I put down. This is an example again of another object done in orthographic projection. This doesn't have any circles on it, so it's a little bit clearer for those people. Um, it does have the isometric view, but you can see how dimensions are done. And I, I liked how this is done, especially notice how it uses one line, and that one line can be used, especially at this end, um, for a number of different dimensions. It makes it tidy, it makes it clean, and that's one of the things that I want to try to get you to aim for. There is also hidden detail, because these dotted lines, they may not seem much, but they are in fact hidden detail, because this hidden line just here is this section point just here. And here I've got exactly what you need to have to get a level two pass. Front side and plan views are a minimum, you must have them, and they must be in the right position. Dimensions added, including diameter and radius where possible, to show your understanding of this. A title block showing your name, name of the product, date, scale, materials, tolerance. These extra ones on the end, I wouldn't worry too much about with these practice ones, but for your final drawings in unit one, you will need them. A board around the whole drawing, and then in order to get a merit and above, I need to see hidden detail, maybe a section for you, which is where you have a cut through. Don't worry about that on this particular one. We will go over that in future lessons. 
all details added, not just a simple drawing. So it's going to have a details added to it. And then it's going to have projection lines. And I will talk a bit about what I mean about the projection lines. You should be drawing a 45 degree angle from the top right hand corner of your front view and then projecting construction lines, that is faint lines, in order to create the plan view at the top. Now the exam board really like to see that because it shows that you have done it correctly and you've not just cheated if you like. Now this is the one for today. I've deliberately chosen this one. It's an old one. Um, an old sort of SLR, basic SLR ca uh, camera. It has got a mixture of fairly simple and straightforward um, primitives such as these sort of cubes, rectangles and etc. that you will draw. But it does also have these circles. Now I'd like to see you using a compass for doing these and it does give the diameter of these. Now what you can do if you wish to show a radius is choose to show a radius for one of these in your drawing. It doesn't have to be on every single view but you do need to mention its diameter or radius at least once in your drawing so that people understand what it is. But all the dimensions are there so straightforward and simple today I know this is like oh another orthographic projection drawing well if I'm honest with you nobody got a distinction in the last set of drawings that were uploaded um, and therefore it and there were quite a lot of things that people got wrong so it's clear to me that if there's anything that we can be doing at home with a pencil and a piece of paper orthographic projection is absolutely the perfect one to be doing. If you don't have a 45 degree set square um, you can very simply draw an equal sided square and use that to project the lines over so you get a 45 degree on that one. You should be able to do that fairly simply. Everybody should have a pencil and everybody should have a ruler but if you do have any problems with that let me know. Um, I would like you as well we've got all of these ones which were uploaded um, to the Dropbox, well not the Dropbox but my Google Docs. Um, what I have done is I've created a new one just for this which is Orthographic Lesson 2. So don't put it in the wrong folder, I'll be looking in there. So just to recap, listen to your feedback about your drawings, do a new one and try to aim to correct those mistakes that you made last time. Wednesday. Um, this is obviously a bit of a repeat but it is absolutely crucial that you are going to need to do this guys. Um, I will try and do over the holidays actual orthographic drawings by recording myself but obviously I've got to set up a little studio and everything. It's not something I can do very very quickly plus I've got to learn <laughs> how to film myself and uh, I've got a few ideas but there are some bits and pieces that I need to do. Anyway those are the bits that I'd like you to sort out. Um, keep yourself safe and hope to speak to you soon. Take care, everyone.